On Billboard tonight, the Vikings' invasion of Grimsby, a secret garden of books, and Sarah Mumperty in film review. Welcome to Billboard with me, Ted Stanley, for our monthly roundup of arts and entertainment in East Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. Friendly viewers have complained that Sarah Mumperty should have been in last month's film review but we succumb to request to review box office blockbusters Barbie and Oppenheimer. However, I can promise she is definitely with us tonight in the moody, sensitive and subtly layered Falcon Lake. Summer events continue through August and into September with She Productions at Junction Ghoul in Beverly Does Broadway on the 30th and 31st of August. The Boston Book Festival from the 21st to the 24th of September features poetry to historical fiction and everything in between. And on the 15th to the 17th of September, the Viking hordes invade Grimsby in a spectacular celebration of our Scandinavian ancestors in the Grim Falfest. In our new feature for 2023, we look back at some of our most popular music guests over the last six years and ask, where are they now? We first met this talented performer from Cleethorpe at the picnic in the park in Grimsby, shortly after her appearance in ITV's Starstruck. Famous for her realistic portrayals of Ariana Grande and Dua Lipa, Alice is one of the most popular tribute acts in Europe, but tonight we have this amazing entertainer just as herself. Singing now for roughly three, four years now. I perform as myself and Ariana Grande and Dua Lipa. If it's just me, then some lively numbers, a nice mix of genres, different styles, and hopefully just a bit of a feel-good factor. From music to literature now, and our intrepid journalist and broadcaster Hugh Richards is back on dry land to bring you a review of the latest book releases. Thanks Ted, and yes, it's good to be back on dry land, even if my canine friend is in another country. We know that the answer to Life, the Universe and Everything is 42, the title of a collection of Douglas Adams' previously unpublished notes, now edited by Kevin John Davis as Adams' wildly improbable ideas. The genius behind the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and the Dirk Gently series scribbled hundreds of ideas and notes that never quite made the page or the broadcast. He was a skilled futurologist, some of his notions invented for comic effect and are parts of everyday life. Adams, it seems, was the first to think of the smartphone. This is the Douglas Adams Esoterica, an insight into the mind of a comic master and a visionary. Chris Board has recorded his experiences of teaching English as a foreign language in abroad in Japan. He worked there for 10 years, arriving with no knowledge of the language or experience of teaching. His experiences span North Korean missile scares, embarrassment at a love hotel, the rural paddies and the neon awe of Tokyo. It is observant travel writing, but the insight for many of us who love Japan is that it is not so alien. Islands that take much of their culture from the neighbouring continent, rainy weather, fish as the national dish, a compulsion to cue politely and the desire to drink tea at all times. Sound familiar? Wilbur Smith died at 88 a couple of years ago, the great African novelist of African adventure and the maker of tales about ancient Egypt. The last and ninth of these is Testament, its publication delayed, presumably because of Covid. It is as compulsive as its predecessors, full of high intrigue over the recovery of upper and lower kingdoms from the rightful pharaohs over the invading Hyksos barbarians. Of course, wicked followers of an evil god stand in the way of life and sunshine. Nobody would call Smith a great explorer of the human spirit, but by Osiris, he knew how to tell a story. Activity books for children don't get more creative than Rob Bidov's Draw with Rob series. Now he's in space, offering aliens, spaceships and strange planets to inspire young imaginations. The puzzles are intriguing and the drawing suggestions should spark the artistic interests of any curious child. Some people might prize a knowledge of parsecs and light years, but that can never be as fulfilling as a habit of art. 
That's it, Ted. All my book news back in Blighty. Thank you, Hugh. Hasta pronto. In other literary news, it's the final call for submissions for Origins, the free writing competition from Hammond House Publishing in partnership with the Equality Practice. Inspired by the legend of Grimm and Havelock, writers from around the world are invited to submit a story, poem or non-fiction piece that tells the history of their own origins. Entries close on the 31st of August. And a reminder that the Hammond House International Literary Prize, with cash prizes, worldwide publication and a televised award ceremony, closes on the 30th of September. The first open art exhibition on Grimsby Docks opens on the 28th of August. We caught up with resident artist Dale Mackey to find out more about this ambitious project. An artist in residence means that in the studio for, for at least two years, and you're working from the environment that around the docks. I was asked by the, the guy who was doing the coffee on the docks down below to produce an exhibition of my work, but I thought we'll have an open exhibition for everybody. 35 artists who got in touch with me, so we've got at least 100 works. There's quite a few surprises. John Hopkinson, who sadly died a couple of years ago, he was a really famous Grimsby artist. We've got Sarah Webb, who is uh, a professional artist in Grimsby. Martin Shaw is a painter and decorator, and he paints on wallpaper. The, um, the actual exhibition opens to the public on the 28th of this month, and it runs through till the 30th of September, 9 till 3. The venue is the Coffee on the Docks, which is situated on 2 Auckland Road. Because I've got boobs and it's because it's good for me and my baby. I breastfeed because I wanted to. She needs the bonding, she needs to feel safe. Breastfeeding does all that. Initially that bond was just absolutely phenomenal. I breastfeed because it is very empowering. Breast milk is amazing and it's designed for me and my baby. I breastfeed my baby. And me. And me. And, and us. us. Coming up on tonight's show, a secret garden of books and Banks's barn. But first, here's actress and broadcaster Liz Drury with a review of some of the latest film releases. After the irresistible blockbusters of July, we return this month to some beautifully crafted films that you may have missed, including Matt Johnson's Blackberry and Ira Sachs' Passages. But first, the moody, sensitive and subtly layered Falcon Lake from Charlotte Le Bon. Not unlike last year's After Sun, this is a drifting movie like a summer vacation itself, where moments can feel like boredom, but always have something lingering or simmering beneath. It's a thing of beauty and sadness. With intelligence as sharp as its humour, Blackberry takes an entertaining look at the rise and fall of a generation-defining gadget. Writer-director Matt Johnson charts the rise and fall of the smartphone-turned-status symbol in one of the funniest films of the year. You guys have no idea how to run a company. What's happening, man? I created this entire market. You said they were the best engineers in the world. I said they're the best engineers in Canada. Helped by a remarkable performance from Franz Rogowski, celebrated filmmaker Ira Sachs enhances his already elevated reputation with Passages, a smart and deeply humanistic film that takes a fresh, honest and brutally funny look at messy modern relationships. Set in Paris, this seductive drama tells the story of a gay couple whose marriage is thrown into crisis when one partner begins a passionate affair with a younger woman. I felt something I hadn't felt in a very long time. This is what always happens, we just forget.
Our family film tonight is Elio, an all new movie from Pixar, starring a young underdog with an active imagination who finds himself inadvertently beamed up to the Communiverse, an interplanetary organisation with representatives from galaxies far and wide. Mistakenly identified as Earth's ambassador to the rest of the universe and completely unprepared for that kind of pressure, Elio must form new bonds with eccentric alien life forms, survive a series of formidable trials, and somehow discover who he's truly meant to be. <clears throat> I am the leader of Earth. Why is your voice different? I I've always talked like this since I was a kid, which I'm obviously not anymore, but yes, I run the planet. The trial of uh, Earth can proceed. Uh-oh. Until then, as you say on uh, Earth, okay, bye, I love you. Okay, okay. bye, bye. bye. I, love you. I love you. I love you. Uh... <laughs> on DVD and Blu-ray, Revoir Paris, Black Lotus and Pacification are also worth a look. In 2022, Grim Falfest saw the Viking hordes invade Grimsby in a spectacular celebration of our Scandinavian heritage. And they're back again this year. Organiser Julia Thompson tells us what to expect. So Grim Falfest, so Falfest is an autumn festival and it comes from the Danish and Grim obviously was the founder of Grimsby and that's how we came up with the name. Events have such a wonderful impact for the community and for the businesses and, and the area as a whole. It launched last September and, and this is the second year for Grim Falfest. Uh, well, this year, I mean, we were absolutely thrilled with the reaction last year, you know, to see the families and the children all cheering Grimm on, you know, as the Vikings came into the town. You know, we're really excited about what's happening and on the Friday night, Grimm will be arriving with his longships again. We've got two fantastic longships arriving with the Vikings. We've got over 150 Vikings invading the town centre this year. We've got street food, uh, so it all starts Friday night uh, on the waterfront. Um, on the Saturday and Sunday, we've got the Vikings are taking over St James Square. So it's a great, you know, adventure to bring the family in and walk around the town centre and, and bump into a few Vikings on the way. The East Marsh Safer Streets project includes a number of community events centred around Grant Thorough Park including Movies on the Marsh and The Secret Garden of Books. If Banksy had a barn, I wonder what it would look like. Royal Academy artist Trevor Bamford has an idea. He also imagines the barns of Rothko, Van Gogh and Jasper Johns in this intriguing exhibition at the Hammond House Gallery in Louth until the 30th of August. A number of people had said, are you going to do a Banksy's barn? And it was intriguing because I, was, I didn't want to just copy something Banksy had done. I wanted something to represent the work that he does. On one side, I've shown the barn being shredded. On the other side of the barn, there are, it's graffiti in the style of, of Banksy's work. It's a man painting a man painting a man. Visitors to the gallery can win a signed exhibition poster by identifying the artist's barns on display. The September exhibition will feature work by artists from the Gallery's Portrait Club, Sketch Club and Life Drawing Club. Full details of the clubs and how to join as an artist or sitter are on the Gallery website. More entertainment news now as Gemma Lingard reviews some of the best shows from around the region in Box Office. On box office tonight, Chocolate Overload in Hull, Money for Nothing in Grimsby and Dance the Night Away in Bridlington. 
But first, From Gold to Rio is at the Skegness Embassy Theatre on the 15th of September. A nostalgic journey back to the new romantic era, which ruled the charts for over a decade. For the very first time, the music from two of the UK's most iconic bands will be celebrated in one power pack show. Over at the Louth Riverhead Theatre on the 8th of September is the Fleetwood Mac and Tom Petty Legacy. You'll be treated to an evening of the very best of rumours era Fleetwood Mac. The biggest hits from Stevie Nicks' solo career and crowd-pleasing hits from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the musical, is at Hull New Theatre on the 6th of September. Based on the iconic story, this spectacular stage show follows the hit West End and Broadway productions to combine the memorable songs from the original 1970s motion picture. Money for Nothing, Europe's number one Dire Straits tribute, is coming to Grimsby's Auditorium on the 16th of September. The abundant energy and excellence of their performance makes the show a must-see for any rock enthusiast or Dire Straits fan. At the Caxton Theatre in Grimsby, Amy Wilson and Alison Stretton star in Home I'm Darling from the 9th to the 16th of September. So we are in Home I'm Darling. It is a comedy. It's uh, set in a 1950s home uh, with a modern twist. Um, I think it's a lot of fun. It's got a nice mix of comedy moments. Um, there's a love story in it. There's some music, some dancing, it's really colourful. Tickets can be booked online and website if you like nostalgia, 50s nostalgia especially, with the music and the costumes and the set is incredible. We've built a full 50s house. Um, but yeah, it's a very entertaining, heartwarming story. And finally, at Bridlington Spa on the 9th of September, Lipstick on Your Collar takes you back in time to the golden era of music where the jukebox roared and feet didn't touch the floor. Get your dancing shoes ready, grab yourself a milkshake and relax. You're in for an evening of back-to-back -back hits from the 1950s and 60s. Well, that's almost all for tonight's show. You can keep up to date with the latest news on our Facebook page. And to make sure you don't miss any of our programmes, click the subscribe button below. If you have a story you would like us to feature on Billboard, email details to news at billboardtv.uk. The latest programme on the Heritage Channel includes special features on the Humberston Fitties and Freedom Street Market. You can watch now on Facebook group or the YouTube channel. From everyone on the Billboard team, thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again soon for more entertaining news, entertaining guests and great music.